love him. Oh my gosh, this next comedian coming up, I love him. We are uh, like kindred spirits. And he's wearing a um, sweater vest, which is pretty much all I require. <laughs> Here he is. You guys all drove up here? I thought there were gonna be like four people. <laughs> uh, nightmare, frankly. <laughs> so you know, I, I, I was driving up here and I saw a sign for the Museum of Tolerance. You guys know about this place? It's like, things have gotten that bad, we need... <laughs> to remind us of what it was like to be kind to each other. And like, I mean, what is inside there? Like animatronic figures showing you how to be polite? After you, ma'am. But you know, I thought religion was pretty much going to make us all tolerant, and I was obviously very, very wrong. Uh, religion is, is kind of like a, a pharmacy these days, for people, you know, you don't feel so good, you pop a prayer, you feel a little bit better about yourself. Like, uh, like Buddha is sort of like Xanax. Jesus is, well, down south, Jesus is crack. And, yeah, like what, the Muslims have Muhammad. Muhammad for me is like a modium, because uh, honestly, when I meet any of their followers, I just want to shit myself. <laughs> but you know, I, I make fun of religion. I, um, but I, I, I have to admit, um, I do find great solace, kind of existential comfort, in a god I call the snooze button. <laughs> I, can love that. Uh, I mean, it's like death. It's like one long, endless sick day. No snooze button. <laughs> Don't have to call in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, you know, I'm not really that religious, but I, I do subscribe to a lot of the uh, self-help methodology. In fact, uh, I usually peruse the uh, self-help sections of bookstores. Just the other day, I, was, I, I saw this title in the self-help section, and it was like, How to Make People Like You. <laughs> but I read it as, How to Make People Like You. <laughs> Some kind of cloning manual. <laughs> I, that's really narcissistic, isn't it? Maybe I'm just kind of a control freak. N narcissistic control freak is like the worst Match.com personality profile. <laughs> Not so bad for J-Date. And I think... <laughs> You guys know what I'm talking about. Right? No. You know, if I put my true personality traits on a, on a dating site, I would be like destined for a life of masturbation and raising kittens. <laughs> but you know, I, I know I'm up here in front of a crowd, and uh, you'd never believe this, but I'm I'm very introverted. In fact, when uh, when I watch the news, it kind of bugs me when kind of the serial killer of the moment is described by neighbors as, well, exactly like I am. <laughs> it's always the neighbor going like, well, he was quiet and pretty much kept to himself. <laughs> pretty good with children. <laughs> I think that's why when I told most of my friends and family that I was considering a performance, they're like, go, speak in public, talk out loud. Oh my God, do it for us, do it for our safety. <laughs> But you know, in spite of all my personality flaws, I know that I am actually the most employable person on the planet. <laughs> you wanna know why? Because I know I look like everyone who's had any job anywhere. It never fails. When I'm, when I'm in the aisle of any store, it's like a stranger will come up to me like, hey, do you work here? What is that? I mean, do I give off some kind of Walmart <laughs> Office Max R Us pheromone attracts these people to me. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not like I can really do anything with that either. It's not like I can, uh, you know, I could be at a job interview and say, "Oh no, you don't, you don't need my resume." Well, let me ask you one question: Do I look like I work here? <laughs> That's what I thought. I will see you on Monday. <laughs> Prick. 
but uh, no, I know I look a certain way. Somewhere between uh, kind of like skinny geek and uh, tall, thin, and Manson. That's fair to say. But you know, uh, as, as I age, you know, your looks change. You know, aging is kind of like your body just giving way to gravity, you know? But I'm really skinny and flabby, which kind of defies physics. So, so I got that going for me. No, no, but you know, I'm not anorexic, but I, I do eat very healthy. Uh, you know, I, I pay attention to what I eat, but eating healthy can just be so boring, you know? Um, in fact, a friend of mine, is in the audience. He, uh, he, uh, he, I think he found a solution for a variety uh, of diet because um, this is true. There are these tablets that you can take and it will make anything that's sweet, I'm sorry, anything that's sour taste sweet. This is, this is real. So like if you're having like yogurt, it'll taste a little bit like ice cream. If you have like lemon juice, it'll take, like, taste like honey or whatever. And I started to think, well, you know, wow, if your brain can be tricked into thinking that something is sour, tastes sweet, can it be fooled into thinking, like, shit tastes sweet? <laughs> and is there a substance that could do that? And, and there is. It, it's money. <laughs> but, you know, speaking of money, oh, what a great segue that was. I, I went holiday shopping in, uh, in Beverly Hills. And, uh, and uh, it's... It's kind of strange, you know, you go to Beverly Hills and it's just like really extravagant prices on everything. I went to this place, Barney's, and um, there was this, uh, in the men's department, there was this shoe with a pet, uh, it was on a pedestal. And I, I walked up close to it and it's just like this, uh, it's kind of like this converse uh, high top. And it had like bedazzled crystals and you know, like shiny shit all over it and some furry bullshit around the shoe holes and everything. But, uh, but what was really strange is the price. I lifted up the heel and it was uh, $1,200. $1,200 for Muppet feet in, in like the biggest, ritziest store in Beverly Hills? And I mean, I'm not even sure that's for like the, the pair, you know? I mean, do you remember back in the day when people were like killing each other over $100 Nikes? If you got shot over these shoes, it wouldn't be a crime. <laughs> it would be justice. Uh, you know, um, uh, I, in addition to getting up in front of people and, and complaining, I'm, I'm also an illustrator. And this weekend, I just I, I finished up this. I gotta admit, it's a really wonderful caricature of Allah. I mean, it had like a really, really intricate uh, crucifix over his huge tits and everything. Yeah, I know, you know, you can get killed for a joke like that, I get it. And by the way, can we just call the war on terror a tie? I mean, they're running from our, from our missiles, we're running from their shoe bombs, we're all scared shitless. Mission accomplished! You know, uh, uh, speaking of terrorism, you know, like, if the terrorists win and they take over our government, what's their economic plan? <laughs> is, it, is it like some kind of pain bartering? Like they chop pieces of each other off and trade them for chickens? Is that how it works? <laughs> what, what would the nego heavy negotiations sound like in that condition? <laughs> You know, uh, well, I got one more thing to say about terrorism before I wrap it up. I was, I was looking at my DirecTV programming guide, and I saw a documentary. It was 9-11, uh, the Behind the Fall of the Towers. And listed directly below that was Muppets Take Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> I never implied that the Muppets would do that. It's bad enough they're buying shoes at Barney's. <laughs> hey, thank, thanks so much.